Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian. It's Thursday, March 5th. Thanks for staying with us. After one of the most brutal summers on record of load shedding, Bahamas Power and Light BPL introduced first fire of the new GETM 2500. The issue of load shedding and energy has been the promise of many governments to fix. However, according to BPL Chairman Dr. Donovan Moxie, this new machine is yet another game changer for BPL. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, Works Minister Desmond Bannister, along with other ministers were on hand for the ceremonial inauguration of the GETM 2500. Dr. Minnis, as the keynote speaker says, the power company is in the midst of a transformation and revolution and says the government is in full support. The new TM 2500 supports my government's push towards cleaner, more reliable and less expensive energy. The flexibility of the new machine with regards to the type of fuel it can burn, with no, with no appreciable loss in output, is vitally important to us as we seek to reduce our carbon footprint. Dr. Minnis says the government's goal over time is to reduce dependence on various fossil fuels and to aggressively utilize more renewable sources of energy, including solar energy. BPL's Chairman Dr. Moxie says the GETM 2500 will dramatically increase generation capacity in collaboration with the 230 megawatts at Station A and D and reassured that it's going to be a load-shedding free summer. First is safety. In everything we do, the safety of our customers and our employees must have paramount importance. Secondly, our customers. We must remain focused on providing our customers with the best possible service at the lowest possible cost. Thirdly, our people, our employees here at BPL. We must always seek to develop capacity for employees so that the organization and our customers can benefit from a well-trained, focused, and a productive workforce. Asset management. It is important that BPL acquire the right assets for our environment and do all that is necessary to grow and maintain these assets so that we can provide reliable electricity and other services to our growing and diverse customers at the lowest possible cost. Dr. Moxie contends that a summer free of load shedding is a major accomplishment for the power giant and says BPL has a strategic plan. Add and reassure here, even before Station D is completed next year, our generation capacity is already growing by leaps and bounds. Station A adds an additional 132 megawatts, all of which will be available in time for this summer. This new GE machine adds at least 30 megawatts to that, on top of the current availability, which hovers around 190 megawatts. That means we will have over 352 megawatts available against a summer peak of 260 expected megawatts. There will be an end to load shedding. Minister with responsibility for BPL, Desmond Bannister, says it's a light at the end of the tunnel and expressed that this one promise made by the FNM administration to fix the generation issue has become a reality. BPL and Shell have completed their negotiations and Shell has committed to constructing a LNG regasification facility at a location near the Clifton Pier power station. Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Senator Fred Mitchell is calling for the government's attention and for the free national movement to disassociate itself from what he calls a slimy and sickening attempt to be funny. The PLP chairman making reference to a meme circulating social media that depicts the leader of the opposition, Philip Davis, with a gun to his head. Mr. Mitchell charging that the FNM may find it funny, but says it's an act of violence and a threat to create bodily harm, which should be condemned by all right-thinking individuals. JCN's news team reached out to Minister of National Security Marvin Dames, who says threats of death against anyone is a serious matter. Now, while the minister doesn't know the nature of the report or who would have made the threatening memes on social media, he says threats of harm or death against anyone will not be condoned. Our news team also reached out to FNM Chairman Carl Culmer, who denounced the meme, adding that it's in no way associated with the free national movement and for the Progressive Liberal Party to think that it is is ridiculous. 
Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist said in the House of Assembly on Wednesday that the government must be attentive to non-governmental organizations who are here in the country since the passage of Hurricane Dorian. He said some of their relief efforts may be inconsistent with the priorities of the government. Without knowing who are the beneficial sponsors of the NGO, what funds are being collected in the name of hurricane relief in the Bahamas, and what is being spent, and what is being spent on in the Bahamas. We have some situations where the relief efforts are inconsistent with the priorities of the government. And obviously that is an issue that we have to pay attention to. Uh, not that we want to discourage anybody, far be it. We want to encourage uh, the support of uh, these NGOs. Uh, however, we want to make sure that it is done so in a co coordinated way, so that we A, don't duplicate effort, and B, that we do not have any organization taking advantage of our citizens. In his presentation on the amendment of the Companies Act, Mr. Turnquist said the act relates to the regulation of non-profitable organizations. He said the act is set up primarily to ensure that non-profitable organizations are not misused for terrorist finances or money laundering, which is an international obligation. He says in most cases, the government knows these NGOs that are here, but in other cases, some NGOs are new to the jurisdiction. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.